गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार वनकम टुडे आई थिंक दैट दिन इज ए सीरीज ऑफ दिस थ्री आवर लेक्चर्स और वर्कशॉप्स इट विल बी कंटिन्यूड अप टू जनवरी लास्ट आई थिंक दैट लास्ट सेशन वी हैव सीन about the indigenous indian traditional method of farming which is based on cowdung manual i think that in the human civilization when vegetarian human being is developed from vegetarian ape two branches are developed from that ape same mother one vegetarian living being that me human being and vegetarian monkeys and then human civilization was started i would like to divide entire human civilization in five stages number one stage since development of the human being up to he started cow keeping that was the first stage of human civilization there was no agriculture cow keeping then second stage from starting of cow keeping up to 700 1776 up to 1776 this is the second stage of human civilization why 1776 <laughs> because on 1776 james watt scientist had developed one steam engine and that was the miracle development in the human civilization before development of steam engine human being was utilizing only human sources these both hands that means human energy bullock energy horse energy horse power donkey power and camel power what are the activities were done in those period were done only by these five energy sources when james watt developed this steam engine in the history of the first in the history of the human civilization and then then and all changes in the human human civilization were started that means the industrial revolution was started that was the first engine developed by james watt and that engine started a first industrial revolution in the world and during this industrial revolution territorial imperialism was also started from 1776 up to 6th of the august 
1945 from since 1776 to up to 6th August 1945 the third stage of human civilization civilization was continued 6th August 1945 during second world war when america attacked by atom bomb on nagasaki and hiroshima of japan entire human history was changed and that incident was a key mark in the human civilization 6 august 1945 stopped the territorial imperialism and started new era that means economical imperialism and now fifth stage of human civilization was started from 1st of January 2020 1st January 2020 not only the five, fifth stage of the human civilization was started 1st January third world war also was started these are the five stages of the human civilization in this new third world war was not started by any weapon not by atom bomb not by neutron bomb not by hydrogen bomb not by tanks and not by guns and missiles this new third world war was started by one very minute virus that is called corona two minus two minute this corona virus we can observe we can't observe, observe under normal microscope if we want to observe this corona virus we want to take the help of electron microscope too much minute totally invisible to human eyes and microscope also but that virus changed the global history totally changed totally changed in the third stage of human civilization before 1776 everything was 100 percent natural there was no any industrial pollution in the air and water in our atmosphere at that time before 1776 before development of the steam engine the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide content in the air was 260 ppm that means in 10 lakh parts of the year the carbon dioxide part was 260 parts that is the natural level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in that level total air is totally cleaned no single pollution at that time when air was totally clean no pollution air quality index was below 30 not upon 30 that means our air was 
हंड्रेड परसेंट क्लीन एंड प्योर आ वॉटर वॉर ट्रांसपरंट सो क्लीन दैट यू कैन सी एट द टाइम यूर फेस इन द वॉटर क्लीन नो पोल्यूशन नो पोल्यूशन नो पोल्यूशन ऑल रिवर्स वे आर फ्लोइंग Entire year with bumper water. Every well tanks were full of water. There were dense forests in entire globe, except the desert area of Middle East and desert area of America and other African countries. and biodiversity in the forest fantastic marvelous marvelous all biodiversity is were present with full capacity everything was okay everything was okay due to the proportion of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere 260 ppm photosynthesis process in the green loose bears were 100% with capacity there is no any restriction in the photosynthesis process human respiration fantastic no any restriction in the human respiration lungs was strong and you think was body was strong but when steam engine was developed entire scenario was changed because of the steam engine industries were developed and those industries started to manufacture the commodities in large quantity demand is created in the consumer area deliberately so that they can purchase every commodity from the market and industrial industrial revolution was started simultaneously simultaneously the air pollution and water pollution was also started we are listening about global warming global warming was not started now basically global wa global warming was started at that time 1776 when james watt developed first engine in the human civilization in our rashtragana our nation song in sanskrit it is sung that sujalam suphalam mailaj sitalam matavam vande mat that the meaning is that all the human resources were full with capacity we are trying to regain again we are trying to regain again that third stage of the human civilization best beautiful marvelous fantastic stage of the human civilization we want to regain again so that our future generation can be sustained साथियों इन द प्री स्टेज ऑफ ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन वेन ह्यूमन बींग वॉज रिसाइडिंग इन द क्यूज आफ्टर ही लेफ्ट द क्यू एंड ही कंस्ट्रक्टेड हर्ट्स टेकिंग द इंस्पिरेशन फ्रॉम द बर्ड्स who are building their own nest 
and human collected some seeds of the grasses, taking inspection of the birds, started to sow the seeds near the hut. And when so many huts came together, villages were developed. Demand of the food was developed. There was a competition between birds, animals, and human beings to get available the fruits because when the fruit was matured and become very sweet, first attack was done by birds. So human thought that we can't depend on the fruits. If the birds are eating the seeds of the grasses and they are strong, so they have taken the inspiration from the birds, selected the plant, which are selected by the birds, and they have toilet the seed and sown in his agriculture farming. And given the name millets, the first millet was developed barnyard millet, second finger millet, third poso millet, then kodo millet, and then all other millet, and then pearl millet and coarse millet, that means jaw, swallow. This was the first invention of human being in the first stage of human civilization. He saw that there are wild cows in the forest and calves are drinking the milk of those cows and they are strong. Human has taken the inspiration from the cows. He started cow keeping. When humans population was increasing, then he started to cut down the forest and started to do the agriculture. When he cut down the forest, initial three years he got a beautiful, fantastic, best production because due to the humus in the soil, which is contained since lakhs of years. But when he found that after three years, production was declining continuously. And he thought that we are keeping the cows in large scale. And there is a cow dung manure, a big heap, mountain. Go Vardhana Parvat, Go Vardhana Parvat, mountain up. This is a cow dung manure. Why we can not use it in the farming to increase the production? Then he started to take the experiment trials. And when in the trial they got fantastic result, more production than previous production. And that was the correct time to start indigenous ancient Indian agriculture, which is based on cow dung manual. And that cow dung manual technology is called now in Hindi, Go Adharit Kushi, cow based Kushi. So many people are giving the name sustainable agriculture, chemical free, Rasan Mukta Kheti. Chemical free agriculture, sustainable agriculture, Shashwat Kit. We have to investigate about this ancient technology, which is based on cow dung manure, which is called Pramparagat Kheti, traditional farming, which is accepted by government of India as a policy. And government of India declared policy about Paramparagat Kheti. Now, what is this Paramparagat Kheti? What are the drawbacks? It is very essential to investigate. Because the youth farmers are came, come on the, on the square. And they are seeing lot of roots are 
going about the agriculture and every route was having the board the first route the board was go adharit kushi paramparagat kushi cow based farming second board rasayan mukta kheti chemical free farming third board shashwat kushi sustainable agriculture there is a fourth board organic farming fifth board vedic farming vedas farming sixth board yogic farming then so many cultures they have given the name variable name west decomposer culture west decomposer culture and they have given name biodynamic culture they have given name so many names are given by these people let us investigate which route is better will not exploit us and will take us on the correct direction since 10000 year in asian countries african countries and latin american countries this ancient cow based farming was started today also it is continued which is based on cow dung manure what is the technology technology is that the farmers are digging the pit which is having 1.5 feet height depth and every day the dung urine part and waste of the fodder is collected from the cow pen goshala and uh, added on that pit cow dung manure pit the ash from the cooking range collected again added on that pit the cleaning is done of the outer part of the house and also that material is dumped in that pit every day and now that pit is coming up it is called cow dung manual which technology is better for farming and which technology is harmful to decide to fix there should be some standards by which we can investigate whether this technology is correct or not the first standard whether it is a knowledge second whether it is science third standard whether it is truth fourth whether it is dharma not religion dharma fifth whether it is a non violence sixth whether it create global warming or not seventh whether it is responsible for the destruction of natural resources like soil water atmosphere energy biodiversity and space and time next whether it is responsible for migration of the youth from the rural area or not next 
with us this technology is responsible for suicide of the farmers or not next whether it is responsible for death of the people death of the people by corona cancer diabetes heart attack tuberculosis or any other dreadful diseases these are the standard i think that we have to keep our infant and you should get which technology is based on the standards you know global warming is a current issue we discuss throughout the world every day most important issue and that global global warming is responsible for climate change and that climate change change the root and form of the monsoon that climate change change the farming pattern and also the rural economy global warming means to increase the temperature of the atmosphere ipcc intergovernmental panel on climate change had declared that when due to the global warming when 1 degree temperature was increase will be increased the agriculture production will be decreased by 40% 40% inside our genotype in the cells of human cells plant cells and animal cells there will be internal changes which are called mutation internal mutation in hindi utparivartan utparivartan and due to this internal mutation we can't coincide adjust with the biological watch inside the human body which are developed and given by the god when humans was born Human was born first time, and that biological watch says that human body can adjust only five thousand to seven thousand foot candle intensity of the solar light. Human body, plant body, animal body can adjust only two eighty ppm carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, not more, not more. not more human body can adjust with all climate changes and natural calamities when we have to get up when we have to sleep what we have to eat everything is managed by this biological watch inside the human body but due to the global warming our biological watch become totally imbalanced because our body was adjusted adjusting to 80 ppm carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere is enhanced up to 480 ppm cannot be adjusted by human body cannot be adjusted by human body in the sunlight the intensity of the solar light 5000 to 7000 foot candle can be accepted by human body very easy but due to the global warming we have seen the intensity of the solar light is enhanced now 
up to 12,000 foot candle, 12,000 foot candle cannot be adjusted by human body at any cost. God has created human 100% vegetarian and God has given the menu of the food of human being only vegetarian. Human can eat only the loose fruits, pots, grains and tubers of the plant body. And that is the natural food of human being. Can be easily digested by intestine. Easily digested. But according to their biological watch given by the God, human intestine cannot be digest any other human made chemical unnatural things which are introduced in our body as a food material. That means According to their biological watch, every activity is happened. But that biological watch is totally imbalanced due to this global warming and climate change. If due to the climate change, there will be one and a half will increase. We can't do the agriculture. That will be the stage. Farmer will become totally unable to continue agriculture. That will be the stage. And for that, increasing 1.5 degrees centigrade temperature due to the global warming. Why want to emit emit sixty thousand crore metric ton of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Six zero thousand crore metric ton of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We are emitting every year three thousand six hundred to four thousand. Crore metric ton of carbon dioxide every year. If it will be continued, then we can achieve that target 1.5 degree centigrade temperature within 18 to 20 years. For survival of human being and living being and plant body. The air quality index, air quality index should be below than 30. Before 1776, the air quality index was 10 to 20. Now, due to the global warming and climate change, the air quality index was increased up to 700 also. In November, New Delhi, 778 air quality index. How we can survive? So it is very essential to restrict the human, uh, restrict the global warming and climate change. The government of India has given the legal commitment in Copenhagen summit that India will reduce 23 percent carbon emission. How? How? Which are the sources of carbon emission? It is very essential to investigate. Let us discuss about this cow dung manual. Go Adharit Kushi. Shashwat Kushi, Rasayan Mukta Kushi. Let us discuss. Param Paragat Kiti. 
which is the policy of government of India. When cow dung manure is decomposed in the pit, outside the root, in the pit, near the cow pen, or outside the village, uppermost structure of the cow, uh, cow dung manure is decomposed by active pneumocytes. First attack is done by active pneumocytes. There are a urine part in the cow dung manure because we are collecting the urine part, the cow dung and carbonic materials continuously. That urine part in the cow dung manure is decomposed by actinoacidis and ammonia is released. After completion of the part role of actinoacidis, then ammonia is converted into nitrite, nitrite, and that conversion is done by another species of the microorganism, nitrosomonas bacteria. That means nitrosomonas bacteria convert ammonia into nitrite. Then third part, these nitrites are converted into nitrates, nitrates by another species of the microorganism, nitrobacter, nitrobacter. Now nitrogen is released, uh, nitrate, nitrates are released. These nitrates are converted into free nitrogen by means of the denitrifying bacteria. Denitrifying bacteria. Natra vilikikaran jivan. And that nitrogen is coming in the atmosphere due to the entire series of the decomposition by variable species of the microorganisms. And that bacteria is a volatile bacteria. Uh, that nitrogen is volatile nitrogen. Immediately combines with the oxygen in the atmosphere. Oxygen portion is started, oxidation process, Pani Di Bhavan. And due to the oxidation process, carbon dioxide is released. And it comes in the atmosphere, not destroyed immediately. It remains in the atmosphere up to 120 years. And this carbon, uh, this nitrous oxide, this nitrous oxide, which is prepared by the oxidation process, it remains in the atmosphere. It is a greenhouse gas, which is responsible for global warming and climate change. That means this Paramparagat Kheti, indigenous ancient Indian farming, cow-based farming, go Adarit Kushi, responsible for global warming and climate change. Number two, the carbonic part of that cow dung manure, because this is a cow, uh, carbonic part, dung also a carbonic part, because what the grasses are eaten by bullocks and cows, the part of the grasses are coming in the cow dung. Entire grass part also is coming in the cow dung. Dead body of the bacteria is also carbonic material. Dead bodies of the insects in the that cow pit, again, it is a carbonic material. And this carbonic material, which is carbon based, in that carbonic material, 46 to 48 percent 
of carbon is existed that means it is a 100 percent carbon and that carbonic material is again decomposed by actinomycetes and another species of the microorganism and carbon is released this carbon is a volatile carbon there are three forms of the carbon stable carbon unstable carbon and volatile carbon in the first stage of the decomposition stable carbon is converted into unstable carbon in the second stage of the decomposition in the cotton manure pit the unstable carbon is converted into volatile carbon and that carbon is coming in the atmosphere it remains in the atmosphere 120 years and as it is a volatile carbon a steel chanchal immediately he combines with the oxygen in the atmosphere oxygen oxidation process is started and due to this oxidation process carbon dioxide is created and that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which is responsible for global warming and climate change that means go adharit kushi rasayan mukta kushi that means cow based farming chemical free farming shashwat kushi sustainable agriculture param pragat kushi which is declared the policy by government of india is 100% responsible for global warming and climate change. during decomposition of the cotton manure in the pit inside the pit no decomposition process spoiling process is started by an aerobic bacteria which do not want oxygen for their survival these anaerobic bacteria spoil the carbonic material inside the dung uh, inside the this pit of cow dung manure and due to this spoiling the dirty gases are released just like methane is released hydrogen sulfide is released ketone is released so many gases which are very dirty and that methane is coming in the atmosphere remain in the atmosphere above 20 years and this methane is 1000 times more dangerous than carbon dioxide and that methane is a greenhouse gas which is responsible for global warming and climate change. that means when you utilize cow dung manure in parambaragat kushi go adharit kushi sustainable agriculture or you can say rasan mukta khedi you become responsible for global warming and climate change no single gram of the carbon is deposited in the soil because carbon is deposited in the soil in the form of humus in the form of humus or bodies of the soil insects and microorganism in the microorganism body or insect body 46% carbon and 14% nitrogen is existed humus is the matter which is a beautiful biochemical reactor which supply all nutrient to the root zone humus is the food stock of the roots even the humus conserve the aerial moisture supply to the roots humus is the fertility and productivity of the soil that means how much maximum we can increase the humus content in the soil we can increase the fertility and productivity of the soil productivity of soil is based on fertility of the soil and that 
fertility and productivity of the soil is given by only humus by only humus only humus we can say our mother soil is a mother when it is alive stone straw is not a mother because they are not having the life aliveness of the soil is given by the biodiversity of the microorganisms insects this is called microflora in the soil soil microflora and that is the real real mother real soil mother if in the soil we can conserve 2.5 percent organic carbon again i will let repeat if we can conserve 2.5 percent of the organic carbon in the soil carbon nitrogen ratio should be maintained 10 is to 1 and when we create 100 crore microorganism count in 1 gram of the soil then that soil is a fertile soil life cell and in the circumstances 2.5 percent carbon contained in the soil 10 is to 1 carbon nitrogen ratio and 1 gram of the soil 100 crore microorganisms if we can maintain this situation in the soil we can get 240 metric ton of the sugarcane production per acre 40 metric ton of the fruit production per acre 120 quintal of the grains per acre production that is the potential capacity of the layer of the soil which can be achieved but when when this condition can be fulfilled should be fulfilled in the soil carbon content 2.5 percent now subhash palikar is not saying the agriculture scientists are saying that carbon content in indian soil is only 0 0.03 0 0.03 not 0 0.3 not 0 0.03 Soil become 100 percent barren. How we can accept, uh, we can uh, expect from the soil, but my products now. That means it is very essential to conserve the carbon in the soil by means of the humus, by means of humus. Now, humus is created by decomposition of the beneficial uh, uh, humus is created by decomposition of the straw material. Straw means dead body of the living being. That means the residues of the crops, dead body of the bacteria dead body of the insects, dead bodies of the local earthworms in the soil, dead body of microflora in the soil, it is called straw. And this straw is decomposed by variable, beneficial, useful, aerobic bacterial species in the soil. That means for humus creation, two inputs are required. One, residues of the crop as it is. We have to introduce on the soil surface as a straw mulching and culture of the microorganisms so that we, we, can, we have to put in the soil so that humus can be created. Jivamrutam, Ghana Jivamrutam in Subhash Palikar natural farming is the best culture of the microorganism. Local cow dung is the best culture of the microorganism. In one gram of the local cow dung, 
I have got minimum 300 crore, 3000 million beneficial liquidity market within one gram of the local power. Two inputs, stock, mulching, only heat to mulching, not polyester mulching, not poly mulching. Second, Jivamutam Gana Jivamutam prepared for the cow dung and urine. And third, the body of humus is constituted by 60% organic carbon and 6% organic nitrogen. That means in the body of humus, carbon nitrogen ratio is 60 to 6 means 10 is to 1. 10 is to 1. That means 10 kg carbon, 1 kg nitrogen. And that nitrogen, we want organic nitrogen which is taken from the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, 78.1% nitrogen is existed, ocean of the nitrogen. And that nitrogen is taken by the microorganisms, nitrogen fixing bacteria, and given to the roots and roots supply to the leaves. This is the symbiosis chain. That means that aerial nitrogen is fixed in the soil by pulses, by pulses crop. Dicot, leguminous pulses crop, dependent on, belonging on leguminous family, subfamily papillomus. Three inputs are required for the development, creation of the humus. Number one, straw mulching of the all residues of the crop. Second one, Jivamut Ghana Jivamutam as a best culture of the microorganism to create the humus. And third one, pulses intercrop in the main crop. Automatically, humus is created. Automatically, humus is created. But when condition, condition, there is a condition. Humus is created only near the root zone of the plant body, not beyond the root zone, not outside the root zone. Again, I would like to repeat. Most important topic, humus is created near the root zone, not beyond the root zone. Because, because one square feet leaf surface area, one square feet leaf surface area, by means of the photosynthesis process or carbon assimilation process, create 4.5 gram carbohydrate raw sugar and 25% raw sugar is secreted through the roots to feed the microorganisms. What is the chain? Hindus prepare the raw sugar, carbohydrates, one square feet leaf surface area, one day, 4.5 gram carbohydrate, 25% carbohydrate raw sugar is secreted to the root and to supply it to fed to the microorganism and in exchange microorganism cook the food and supply to the roots. That means microorganism cook the food, supply that food to the roots and in exchange roots feed to the microorganism raw sugar. This is symbiosis sarajuana. Without getting raw sugar, bacteria cannot and do not create the humus. Humus is created only near the root zone because the bacteria are getting raw sugar through the roots. That means, that means, if any plant body, if any residue of the crop, any straw, will be mulch on the soil near the root zone and Jivamutam Ghani Jivamutam will be given automatically humus will be created but if decomposition process will not be started near the root zone it will be started beyond the root zone humus will not created humus will not created manure is created
Kaudang manure is not created near the root zone. Kaudang manure is created beyond the root zone, near the cow pain, in the pit, otherwise outside the, our village. That means Kaudang manure is restricting, opposing the humus creation. Kaudang manure, Param Pragat Kheti, Rasayan Mukta Kheti, Go Adharit Kushi, Shashat Kushi is responsible. 100% responsible for global warming and climate change and to destroy the humus creation. And when you destroy the humus, you destroy the fertility and productivity of the soil. How we can say this Goadharit Kushi is a sustainable agriculture, Shashwat Kushi? How we can claim? That Prambhara Kushi will be the policy of the Indian government. No, not at all. Self-reliant India. Atmanirbhar Bharat. That means to sustain the natural resources, then we can develop Atmanirbhar Bharat. Self-reliant India. If this Prambhara Kushi Go Adhari Kushi, which is based on Kaudang Maneuver, it destroys natural resources. Now we can say it is a part of Atmanirva Bharata, self in India. Not at all. So, Satyu, I request the government of India to rethink about the policy. To rethink about the policy. This Parampara Kushi is more dangerous than chemical farm. This Goa Adhari Kushi is more dangerous than chemical farm. Since my childhood, I was seeing my father was doing only old traditional farming, which is based on cotton matter. There was a Godan, cows, bullocks, in my cow pen. 12 acre land in the village, near the, in, near the village, on the in the village, my 12 acre plot, and another plot with, beyond the village. What was the cotton manual was available? It was utilized in the 12 acre to take the crop of the cotton. Once a three year, not every year, once a three year, that was rotation. And rest of the entire land was totally not getting the cow dung manure in its own life, whole life. There was no utilization of the cow dung manure in rest of the agriculture land. It was totally impossible to utilize also. Totally impossible. What I have seen? Where entire cow dung manure was utilized in 12 acre land in the cotton crop. And when the seeds were sown in the entire land, if there is a deficit of the rainwater during the sowing period, no rainwater, sowing is completed, but no rainwater, there is no enough moisture in the soil. Where the cow dung manure was utilized, the seeds were, were, were not germinated. If they are germinated, the small plants was dried or dried. But where there was no any cotton manure was utilized, there was no drying of the seedling. Beautiful seed germination was made. Why? Because that means, that means, that means, that means, when my father was applied cotton manure, entire cotton manure, 12 acre land in cotton variety, cotton crop, that cotton manure was not digested by the soil. Out of limit. So heat is created in the soil due to the indigestion. 
and that heat destroyed the humidity in the soil and shielding red light. That means, that means we want the cow dung manure not as a fertilizer, not as a manure. We want cow dung manure only as a culture of the microorganism. How much I have taken the trials when I have started my research work since 1988 to 2000, 12 years, 12 years. During my research work, it was 100% decided not to take single rupee from anybody for my research work. No. My mother, I have given the assurance to my mother, I will not take single rupee from anybody. I have sold my 10 acre land during this 12 year research work. 10 acre land, very beautiful land. I have sold because it was a very expenditureless. There was a lot of expenditure. Labor was required in the research work continuously. Since morning 6 to evening 6 continuously. There was a uh, 154 projects. It was continuously doing. And my wife sold her ornamentals for the research work. I have lost so many things. Then God has given me this beautiful philosophy. In my chapter, I have found that Twelve, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, two, four, three, two, one cartload per acre. I have a dedicated quantity over the year. Three years continuously. And what I have found, I have found in the Goa Dharit Pushi, Dambara Pushi, Additional Fear of the Farming, Vendes and Cotton Manuals. If you want, that much quantity of the production which is given by chemical farming that means if if you are practicing chemical farming and you are getting 18 quintal per acre production and if you want same 8 quintal per acre production in this goa dharit kushi kaudang based uh, manual based kushi agriculture plumber kushi then you have to utilize minimum 18 to 20 cartloads of the FOM. That means minimum 9 to 10 metric tons of the FOM counting manual every year per acre. Now I would like to ask you whether as a farmer you tell me whether it is a possible, it is possible to utilize 20 cartloads FOM counting manual per year Per acre, it is possible? Hundred percent impossible. Only possible to go shallows, not for common farmer, not for common. Then I found if I want 18 to 20 cartos per acre out of manual, I have to keep 10 cows, local cows, 10 cows, local cows. I have to keep. To get available 18 cartos, 20 cartos of the FIM per year. That means if I have 10 acre land, I have to keep, I have to keep how much? Huh? 100 cows. Whether it is possible? If I have 5 acre land, I have to keep 50 cows. Local cows, it is possible? 100 percent impossible. 100 percent impossible. India is having 35 land under division of million of land under division in India now. As for the voice of the Indian government, 
और वो आधारित परंपरागत कृषि इफ वही वन टेन काउस पर एक अनिद द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज विलिंग टू एडॉप्ट एंटर इन एंटर नेशन दिस परंपरागत कृषि दैट मींस थर्टी फाइव करोड़ एक कर लैंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय टेन काउस थ्री हंड्रेड फिफ्टी करोड़ काउस वही वन थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड मिलियन काउस वही वन and now we have only 8 crore cows 8 crore cows 29 crore the livestock animal stock in india belonging that 29 crore we have only 8 crore in dream also it is not possible to follow and to add up this go adarit kushi and uh, that is called paramparagat kushi not possible not possible not possible i request to government of india please rethink your policy don't accept my subhash palekar natural farming you want if you want not to accept don't accept but don't continue this policy otherwise there is a big problem in the rural economy and national economy also now there is a question in your mind i claim always that what in the history of agriculture since 10000 year since 10000 year every technology is coming maybe ancient cultural agriculture and coding manual एग्रीकल्चर टू अप्लाई द मेटेरियल एंड फर्टिलाइजर otherwise uh, crop cannot grow because why because because they say manure and fertilizer so manure and fertilizer and manure is 100% 100% basically the truth is that my theory is that none of the manure none of the fertilizer is the food of any plant not necessary to utilize not necessary to utilize i will put one scientific theory that 97 to 98.5 percent body of the plant 97 to 98.5 percent body of the plant body is constituted by only three elements: solar energy given by the sun, free of cost, not sent any bill to you; water given by the monsoon, taking from the Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, and Arabian Sea, not sent any bill to you; given free of cost. carbon dioxide taken from the atmosphere given free of cost not sent any bill to it is in their scientific truth i challenge openly they are sure that this truth is untruth how you are misguiding the farmers and nation and government by claiming that the manure and fertilizer is a food If it is the truth, 90.5 percent of the body is constituted by water, air, and solar energy, not given by human being. It is given by the nature, free of cost. Where this question is arise, that man you are in fertilizer you have to apply. Where this question is arise, these people misguided the farmers, governments, and nations. 
So, forget, forget immediately that manure and fertilizer is the food of the soil. Or plant. No, not at all. Not, not at all. That means when I tested and how much maximum quantity of the cordon manure is required for the soil so that entire manure can be digested immediately. I started my research work after three years and after completion my research work I came on the conclusion that any soil is having the capacity to digest maximum 400 kg cow dung manual only 400 kg whole metric whole quintal not ton 400 kg cow dung manual not more than 400 cow dung manual not more than 500 more than 400 kg cow dung manual that is the last capacity of the digestion of digestibility of the soil so I recommended the Ganaju Amutam only mark more than 400 cotton manure. If the capacity of the soil is to digest 400 cotton manure, kg cotton manure, you are applying truck load, tractor load, go shalad are deliberately convincing the farmers which are having the big money in the pocket to purchase big lot of the cotton manure so that goshalas can make commercial goshala, not uh, uh, humanity goshala, commercial goshalas. They want to sell their cotton manure in large quantity, in the higher quantity, higher prices. They have created this problem. If soil is not having any cotton manure, why you are applying load? Why you are applying load? The result, global warming, climate change, and destruction of the humus, fertility and productivity of the soil. So I request, stop this indigenous, cowdung manual based ancient Indian farming. Stop the Pamparagat Kushi. Stop this Go Adharit Kushi. Go Adharit Kushi is a more dangerous than Corona bomb. More dangerous than atom bomb. More dangerous. Stop it. Stop it. Immediately stop it. Otherwise, we can't survive. Otherwise, we can't survive. Second claim is done that Rasayan Mukta Kheti. Chemical free farming. And my technology Somebody told Rasan Mukta Prakutik Kheti, not taken Subhash Palikar name, not. They have allergy. They have allergy name, Subhash Palikar. They are giving the names of the political leaders to the entire uh, schemes, but they will not take the name of Subhash Palikar. Not will take. They have allergy. So they have joined. Rasan Mukta Kheti, Prakuti Kheti, Rasan Mukta Prakuti Kheti, joint. But I would like to do the truth that there is no Rasan Mukta Kushi in the nature. There is no chemical farming existed in the nature, not at all. Show me, I am giving open challenge, show me. Chemical free farming, Rasan Mukta Kheti, show me. Show me. What is madness? Nobody know what is the science. And they are claiming it is totally wrong. By means of the photosynthesis, when green juice of the plant body absorb the solar energy from the sunlight through the sunlight. That solar energy is not 
utilize in the chlorophyll as it is not at all not at all the solar energy is converted into chemical energy a solar energy which is taken by the juice first is converted into chemical energy and that chemical form energy is utilized how we can claim chemical free farming the sun mukta khiti kaise hai sambhav hai bataiye siddha kare bilkul sambhav nahi hai totally impossible in the soil nothing is existed in the chemical form in the soil nothing is existed in the chemical form every nutrient is existed in organic form not existed in the chemical form any root of any plant any root of any plant take all the nutrients in only chemical form not in organic form it is a scientific fact again i will repeat the roots of any plant do not take any nutrient nitrogen phosphate potassium calcium magnesium sulfur nothing 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 the plant root cannot take any nutrient to the soil in organic form the roots want all the nutrients in chemical form and chemical form is not existed in the soil not existed in the soil microorganisms convert the organic matter into chemical nutrient those nutrients which are existed in the organic matter residues of the crop dead body of the dried microorganism inside the soil and that in that dead body in that dead body in the carbonic matter residues of crop residues of the crop understood organic in the organic form all nutrients are existed not in the chemical form microorganism convert organic form into chemical form all the nutrients are converted into chemical form and then they are utilized by the roots that means that means in the nature there is a pure chemical farming pure chemical farming no organic farming existed in the nature not at all not at all in suvas palika natural farming also chemical farming is existed because roots want only the all nutrient in the chemical form how we can claim that rasayan mukta kheti chemical free farming again joint chemical free natural farming i in the nature there is no chemical farming why we can address uh, attest that in the nature natural farming you are joining together two terms are totally different totally different opposite to each other it is 100% wrong 100% wrong in truth and don't say the sign mukta naisargi prakruti kiti don't say it is totally impossible not existing in the nature not existing the sign mukta kheti is a scandal thanda to exploit the mentality of the farmers to misguide the farmer and nation the solar energy is coming in one square feet one square kilometer area one kilometer length one kilometer wide this area one square feet where one square kilometer area we can conserve 20 megawatt solar energy 20 megawatt and that solar energy when it is converted in chemical form form then it is utilized 
in the nature there is no organic farming only chemical farming exists so i request to those my my colleagues my friends who are joining to see this two word different words together rasayan mukta prakrutik kheti which is not existed in the nature totally different so it is totally wrong stop this utilization of the term rasayan mukta kheti it is not existed in the nature it is not then shashwat krishi sustainable agriculture third root board sustainable agri shashwat there is no anything sustainable in the nature in the universe everything is coming in the new form every moment because biodiversity is the lead of the nature Every day, old species are finishing, new species are coming. There is no sustainable anything in the nature because biodiversity. The God want to create the biodiversity. What are the definition of the sustainable farming? In there was one seminar at Pune. and retired scientist agriculture scientist were present and ngos were present ngos who were promoting organic farming lot of discussion i was also present i was present not as a uh as a spokesman not speaker not as a audience and they have given the new draft of the sustainable agriculture what half percent 50% agriculture chemical inputs and 50% organic inputs that is sustainable agriculture one group of the farmers or ngos given the name to the organic farming as a sustainable agriculture one group of the ngos has given the name sustainable agriculture to compost technology there are various definitions of the sustainable agriculture confusion great confusion we have to avoid the confusion we do not want to create the confusion friends satyu i would like to put my simple definition of the sustainable agriculture that is sustainable agriculture by which we can sustain all natural resources that is sustainable agriculture by which we can sustain all natural resources वह शाश्वत कृषि जिसके बाद से हम सारे प्राकृतिक संसाधन को शाश्वत रखें वो शाश्वत वाटर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस स्वाइल वाटर एनवायरमेंट बायोडाइवर्सिटी ऑफ योर लिविंग बींग एनर्जी टाइम एंड स्पेस we have to sustain these entire natural resources and that is the real sustainable agriculture just we have seen pam pragat kushi go adar kushi destroy the fertility of the soil restrict the human creation and is possible for global warming how we can say it is a sustainable agriculture How we can see? 
in organic farming also they are emitting huge quantity of greenhouse gases is become responsible for global warming climate change organic farming also destroy the humus and fertility of the soil how you can claim that organic farming is a sustainable agriculture show me do it these people do not know about the agriculture these people do not know about the science and technology they do not know what is the nature because maximum people they are not having their own land they do not know about the agriculture how to practice agriculture they do not know nothing they do not know anything from the agriculture and these people are speaking more about agriculture and giving misguidance totally misguidance they do not know what is agriculture just stop it just stop sathiyo we are shown shown that there is no sustainable agriculture existed in the nature there is no chemical free sand mukta kheti existed in the nature and there is no dilution of the the sand mukta kheti and natural farming no dilution no it is totally wrong i pray request to government of india please we think about your points organic farming organic farming the history as per the relation of this movement with the government of india in the last parliament election Honorable Narendra Modi ji, Prime Minister of India at that time, given the promise to Indian people, farmers, that he will be re-elected as a Prime Minister, he will give double income of the farm. Announce, dependent on the ICAR, 76 Agriculture University, he has deem in the mind that when I declared as a supreme authority of India that we will do double income of the farmer, he thought that ICA, Indian Council of Agriculture Research and 76 Agriculture University definitely will discover, will develop one any technology within short period and will give me which will use the double production, double income. Five years is gone. Five years has gone. The government of India is giving close and close of the fund to the universities. I say, yeah, the salaries, big salaries, one lakh, one and half lakh per month salary they are giving. Basically, it is a legal commitment of the agriculture universities. To give the technology to the supreme authority of the India, not given at all within this five years, not given, not given, not committed, not committed. Now, 2019, there was a, another election, parliament election. Again, the question will be asked by the people that what is happened about double income of the farmer. So, Government of India has started to search out any other technology rather than this chemical farming. University people, as here, will develop by farmers or any other organization. Please investigate the government of India order to Niti Ayok, Honorable Raju Kumarji. Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog, a very conscious economist, I think that, in Niti Aayog, my close friend, 
he started his search out which is the best technology which is developed by farmer or any organization not by agricultural which will you double income and they have search out go adharit kishi paramparagat kushi saju kheti sustainable agriculture and aapka uh, uh, even uh, vaidhik kushi yogi kushi organic farming chemical farming entire entire at last niti ayog came on the conclusion that nothing none of the technology is existed in india which will give the double income of the farmers but there is one technology at the time that technology name was zero budget natural farming now it is named subhash parikar natural farming that technology is having the capacity to increase the fertility and productivity of the soil restrict the global warming and climate change to restrict the migration of the youth from the rural area to restrict the suicide of the farmers and which will give double income more than double income of the farmers when rajiv kumar ji and his team assured that Subhash Palikar Agriculture can do it. He has called me, Palikar ji. We have decided to organize a big meeting, full day meeting at New Delhi. Please give the date. And in February 2019, I have given the date. One day seminar. Honorable and he. ऑर्गेनिकेजेंट organic farming promoters also were present and one team from uh, united nation organization also came to participate in that meeting full day there was a discussion and evening after completion of the discussion honorable raju kumar ji vice chairman of niti ayog declared in the full crowd press conference that we came on the conclusion that to solve these all problems and to give the double income of the farmer only subhash palikar natural farming is uh, capable and we will promote it fifth of the july 2019 cabinet finance minister of government of india honorable nirmala sitaraman ji declared in her budget speech that government of india will promote subhash palikar natural farming she has utilized zero waste natural farming at the time she was not known about the change in the name again in february this year in budget speech she also repeated that what sentence that government of india will promote subhash palikar natural farming she not utilize organic farming work not utilize even in the press conference niti ayog also not utilize the organic farming term only utilize subhash palikar natural but day after day before yesterday honorable agriculture minister of india i listen in the radio news that he declared the government of india will promote organic farming and natural farming both organic farming was not included included in the policy newly they have included yesterday evening i called 
ऑनरेबल संजय अग्रवाल जी विजय प्रिंसिपल चीफ सेक्रेटरी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्ट्री एट न्यू दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिस्टर अग्रवाल जी विदर इट इज करेक्ट दैट यू आर पॉलिसी इज चेंज एंड यू आर प्रमोटिंग ऑर्गेनिक एंड नेचुरल बोथ यस सर वी आर प्रमोटिंग ऑर्गेनिक एंड नेचुरल बोथ आई आस्क वाई If organic farming is more dangerous than chemical farming, why you are promoting? He said, "No, we will promote organic and natural, both." That means, government of India changed the policy. Government of India included organic farming. What is this organic farming? Let us discuss. Organic farming is having. Six inputs. Number one, compost manual farming technology. Second, second, vermi compost technology. Third one, bio biodynamic. Fourth one, EM solution. Fifth one, garbage enzyme. Sixth one. Waste decomposer, seventh, all other cultures are developed by universities and goshalas. All these are included. Even nadep manure also included in organic farming. Now, cow dung. Uh, compost manual technology is the one part of the organic farming jaivik krishi this compost technology is not developed in india it is developed in britain by one great scientist dr Author, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Howard. Doctor Howard was a scientist in Britain. and that albert howard had developed one technology not given any name to the technology he said it is a compost technology dr albert howard met british prime minister exhibited this technology sir this is my technology compost manure technology This is fantastic technology. The prime minister said, "What is the name?" No, sir, I am not given the name. I will give the name organic farming. Organic farming word is utilized in the history of human civilization first for compost technology by this scientist. that organic farming when it came in india he utilized and the translation of the organic farming is converted into jaivik krishi before before this scientist came in india in india nobody was saying that i am a organic farmer i am doing organic farming no in entire world this you uh, uh, what was not utilized not utilized everybody farmer was saying i am a farmer i am doing farming i am kisan i am doing kisani i am khetiyar i am doing kheti nobody was utilizing this word organic farming jaivik krishi 
जैविक कृषि इज ए स्टेट ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग दैट मींस ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इज डेवलप इन ब्रिटेन ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग नेम इज डेवलप इन ब्रिटेन दैट मींस ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इज नॉट ए इंडियन टेक्नोलॉजी इट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट फॉरन टेक्नोलॉजी जैविक कृषि भारतीय स्वदेशी पद्धति नहीं है शत प्रतिशत विदेशी पद्धति ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग कंपोस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी इज नॉट ए इंडियन स्वदेशी टेक्नोलॉजी इट इज ए फॉरेन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आए दिल जी मिले कल दिल जी मिले कल so many promoter of organic farming swadeshi promoter so many swadeshi promoter in india are promoting organic farming as a swadeshi technology is british technology european technology and they are promoting as a indian technology how it is how it is it is a theft they have stolen the name and kept one name go other kushi and they are promoting it is not indian culture it is not a indian culture it is not indian culture theft is not indian culture stealing something something from anybody and selling on their name own name it is totally totally is not indian culture it is wrong it is wrong when dr albert howard exhibited his technology to the british prime minister british prime minister ordered him to go to india india is a big colony of our imperialism and you exhibit you teach your technology to the indian farmers as per the order of the british prime minister this scientists came in india first of all arrange is to enter india and albert howard traveled throughout the india albert howard studied the ancient indian farming very well he has gone the villages he resided in the village he studied well the ancient traditional method of the farming which is called as farming of india and during this to the india the queen of indore has given 300 acre land for their research work today also it is existed i visited that farm and at last this scientist has sent one report to british government prime minister what the report say dr arthur dr uh this scientist said in that report that honorable prime minister i came in india to teach my technology to indian farmers but when i traveled throughout the india i studied the ancient technology of india which is based on cotton manure i came on the conclusion that it is a topmost technology in the world not necessary to learn the my technology by indian farmers but it is very essential to teach the indian farming ancient farming technology to the european farmers this is the certificate given by great scientist in britain that ancient indian farming is the best than european technology what is the technology given by this great scientist technology is that you dig the pit 10 feet long 6 feet wide and 3 feet deep what technology said you dig the pit 
six feet long, long, three feet wide, and three feet deep. Pit the walls of the pit by stone so that it will become hard. Then collect the residues of the crop in proper quantity. Collect. Cut down the pieces. Then collect the slurry of the cow dung and then start to fill up the pit. First, you keep one feet layer of the residues of the crop straw material. Then sprinkle slurry of the cow dung manure, uh, cow, cow dung, liquid cow dung slurry on that one feet layer. Again, second one feet layer. Again, slurry. Again, one feet layer. Again, slurry. So that you can come two feet above the soil level. Cover the surface of the pit by cow dung slurry. Keep it for six months. After six months, Remove entire uh, manure outside the pit. Keep it for a few days. Very, very hot, very hot by uh, pulling up. And afterward, again refill the pit by that cow dung manure. And in, in May, May man, month, you keep, you take that cow dung manure, uh, uh, sorry, compost manure and utilize in your farm. That is the technology. I was searching the technology because since 1988 to 2000, 12 years, there was my research project work 12 years continuously. Because when I started, after leaving my college, I started investigate whether this chemical farming is feasible or not. I started since 1973 up to 1985. During my chemical farming, my production was increasing, but simultaneously, cost of production was also increasing. But there was a net profit. So that I was able to compensate my agriculture expenditure and my home expenditure. But after 1985, dramatic change, my production was started to decline continuously and cost of production was started to increase continuously. There's a big gap. Production was down and cost of production was up. As a result, I was committed to take the loans from banks and money lenders. And at last, I have decided this technology is not feasible for farming, farmers. It is a pre planned concept to exploit the our economy and national economy. It is not a science also. Very dangerous technology. We have to leave. And then what is the alternative technology? My father was practicing oil farming, cow dung manual base, and I was seeing that it is not a feasible. I approved it. Then again, I started to purchase the technology. I got this technology. Then I started my trials. I have dug the pit, 10 feet wide, 13 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 10, 3 feet deep. I have cut down my all bunch of the farming to get available the straw, residues of the crop and uh, weeds. Again, again, I want more quantity. So I, cut, I have cut down all grasses on the both sides of the roads. Even from Gajiland also, I cut down a big labor work, big labor work, big cart roads. But I have done it because I want, at that time, uh, I was willing to investigate whether it is correct or not. I have done that expenditure, huge investment. And when at last, what cowder manure, uh, what compost manure I got from this pit, 
with lot of efforts, lot of labors, lot of money expenditure. I got only that quantity of the compost manure, which can be fulfilled only 10 gunta, that means quarter acre of the land. Only quarter acre of the land. When I utilize this uh, in the uh, this uh, compost manure in one uh, one ten gunta, that means quarter acre land. I got ten percent more production in the first year. For second year, my production was declined fifty percent. Production was reduced due to carbon emission. Due to the carbon emission, I came to conclusion that this is also a very hazardous. Very, very, very demand technology that is compost technology that is organic farming technology. And I started to close that file. Then, which technology I can adopt? Again, I was, I have started to search out. There are so many, there were so many NGOs. I heard about the NGOs. They are practicing vermi composting technology. That was new technology came in India at that time. So I contacted them. What is your technology? Please give me the details. What are the materials, books? I will demand, I will read it. So due to my continuous follow up, they became my friends. I studied well for me compost technology and came on the conclusion I have to investigate. What is this for me compost technology? Let us discuss about it. In Europe, there was a huge discussion in the scientific area started. There's a whole canoe, earthquake in the mind of the scientist. What other topic? Topic was how this cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead, and radioactive elements are coming in the food, human food. What are the sources? Because after investigation, they found that in human food, these very poisonous heavy metals are coming. Cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead, and radioactive elements. There was a full discussion in the scientific area. So many scientific groups, scientists, scientist group started to investigate what is the source of these poisonous heavy metals. And after research work, continuous research work, they found the source that all these cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead, these are the poisonous heavy metals and radioactive elements came in our food through the chemical fertilizer and insecticides. They came on the conclusion that the source of this poison heavy metals is chemical fertilizer and insecticides. Nobody will believe when I claim that the organic, uh, that is chemical fertilizer is source of the heavy metals. Nobody will believe. So I will give some scientific evidences. I have collected and I will put. What is happened? It is most essential to give the scientific evidences.
Pulitzer Award is a grand award in the world. I think they are next 10 Nobel Prize. Pulitzer Award is a grand award in the world. I think they are next 10 Nobel Prize. That Pulitzer Award is given to one journalist, Dub Wilson. Dub Wilson is a journalist who has got a very big honor of Pulitzer Award. He has written one article in Seattle magazine. In that magazine, he said, chemical fertilizers are having radioactive elements and also the toxic uh, heavy metals. Second evidence. John Martyr West. John Martyr West. Soil scientist published one report. He said that the slurry from paper mill, very dirty slurry, wastage from the paper mills are utilized for manufacturing the chemical fertilizer. And in those fertilizers, all the pollutants are coming, including heavy metals. There is one group in California state in America. Name of that group is California Public Interest Research Group. California Janhit Lakshak Sanshodan Gat, Anusandan Gat group. And that research group has declared that the chemical fertilizers are having cadmium, arsenic, these two heavy metals, including 22 types of the poisonous dioxins also. Dioxins also, very poisonous heavy metals. Third evidence, Dr. August Lawrence, Dr. August Lawrence, Dr. Curtis, and Dr. Brown Smith, this is the group, small group of the scientists. They have started to investigate the chemical fertilizers, whether it is a source of heavy metals, and they have found that in chemical pharma, the it, it, chemical uh, fertilizers, they found the toxic heavy metals in large quantity. Fourth evidence. In 2012, in Tulkata nation, Tulkastan, there is one university, name is Bozok University. That university is a biosystem engineering department and head of the department, Professor Sarpo Sauki. Professor Sarpo Sauki, project manager of that biosystem engineering department of Bozok University in Turkestan has taken the research and at last they declare that the in chemical, chemical fertilizers they found cadmium, arsenic, nickel, these poisonous heavy metals. Also, they found some radioactive elements that means radio nucleus like uranium-238 and thorium-232. Another evidence, scientific evidence. In 2014, Gohati University in India, the environmental science department, scientist, Dr. Bayashi Karishma and Hari Prasad Sharma, they studied well the chemical fertilizers and they declared that chemical fertilizers and even in the insecticides, they found cadmium and another heavy metals, poisonous heavy metals. Another evidence. In 2010, Calicut University, Kerala, it is called Kojikod in in Kerala language, it is called Kojikod, in English, Kalikat. 
and that calicut university kozhikode university some uh, botanist scientist hisen kuri mannil dr abdul salem and dr k ramesh chandra they found that chemical fertilizers are having and also insects are having this poisonous heavy metals cadmium arsenic mercury lead another evidence dr grish and dr christensen dr grish and dr christensen a group of the scientist started to investigate about the reality of this uh uh insecticide and heavy metals and he found they found that in the body of isonopetida which was utilized to manufacture herbi compost manure and they found that in the body of isonopetida they found cadmium arsenic mercury lead and also 303 uh, 31 ppm of the lead and 670 ppm of the zinc that means in the body of isonopetida which was utilized for preparation of the vermi compost and that body is having these heavy metals and they have started another research work in one acre land they have utilized vermi compost manure and another fertilizer they have not utilized only vermi compost manure and in one acre never one acre they have not utilized vermi compost nothing is utilized nothing is utilized they have sown the seed on both land after they have taken the soil sample from the both plants investigated in the laboratory and they found their research work that where they have utilized vermi compost in that soil they found maximum quantity of the cadmium arsenic mercury lead and radioactive elements and in which land in one acre they have not utilized vermi compost they have not seen any cadmium arsenic mercury heavy metal no not at all where they are utilizing utilization of the vermi compost they found heavy metals where there was no heavy metal uh, uh vermi compost are utilized they are not found heavy metals that means this is the conclusion that these heavy metals came from through the vermi compost it is the evidence that vermi compost is having heavy metals that means it is the evidence that these heavy metals are coming from the body of the isonopetida isonopetida again another evidence in 1973 dr christensen and 1975 dr ireland and 1974 dr juan cook this scientist has taken the investigation research work and they found that they found that where they are utilize vermi compost technology manure vermi compost they found the heavy metals in the soil and where they are not utilize vermi compost they have not found that uh, heavy metal there another research work dr nelson uh, nelson dr nisil dr this is ilel this group of the scientist had taken the research work on the isonopetida 
which was utilized to manufacture heavy composed manure. And he found, they found that in the body of Asinophytida, there is one virus. That virus introduced the uh, that uh, Asinophytida introduced this virus, which is respons responsible for for foot and mouth disease in the body of the cow and bullocks and those cows are suffered by foot and mouth disease as like corona as like corona another evidence dr brown dr mibel has shown that isonopetida which is utilized vermicompost manufacturing is having one bacteria and he, they, they introduce this bacteria in the body of the hen poultry and, and then the hens poultry is manifested and then through the Poultry manual. It is coming in the soil and is responsible for bacterial disease on the poultry. Dr. Einstein, Augustine, Dr. Lund, and Dr. Dr. Jakarli Javin, 1975, 1974. They have shown that Asunophytida is having the nematode. Asunophytida introduces the nematode in the body of the peak, and that peak is infested by the nematode. So many evidences they have given. I know nobody will believe me. Because I am not a scientist, I am ill. I am a uh, illiteral farmer. I can't uh, give the speech. I can't read the English literature because I am an illiterate farmer. But if anybody wants to investigate, there is huge information in it. You can collect. You can investigate. That is your, your duty. My, this is not my duty. It is scientist duty because they are getting salaries. I, not, I do not take single duty from anybody as a monarchy. I do not take single duty. I am giving my service free of cost. Free of cost. So it is not duty. I am not committed. I am not committed. But so also I am doing this. Theater. That means when scientists in Europe collected this information from the scientific area that chemical fertilizer and insecticides are the main source of the heavy metals. Then they started to investigate. Any any living being in the soil which is having the capacity to eat the straw to eat the dung, but it will not eat the soil. It will not eat the soil. And again, they are willing to investigate, find out one living being in the soil which will collect only cadmium, arsenic, mercury, lead through the dung, and the seed of the crop will be collected. And will be dumped in the excreta of the dead living being. After 10 year research work, they found one living being in the soil of Europe. They collected that living being and giving, given the name Asonopetida. Asonopetida is a worm. 
collected from the soil from Europe. And that Asunophytida was utilized in the first grade as a biomonitor, not as a vermicompost, not at all. Because they was willing to investigate the quantity of the cadmium arsenic mercury laid in the storm water and dung. And they started their research work on the Asunophytida. Meanwhile, meanwhile, in Europe, America, there was a great agitation. A great mass movement has started. We do not want chemical food. We do not want poisonous food. We want chemical free, poison free food. There was a big mass movement in Europe. America. And that mass movement was become very huge mass movement. Specialize the government and exploitation system, invisible, invisible, universal exploitation system, and at last, invisible, universal exploitation system committed to give the alternative technology for chemical farm because of the that mass movement, and they found that this esonopedida is a worm. We do not eat the soil, eat the heavy metals from the straw, and deposit in the its excreta. It is the better because they were willing that exploited system was willing to do that soil poisonous again, and heavy metals are the poisons. So they utilize this isinophilida. For agriculture research work, they have done so many trials. At last, they developed one technology, vermicompost technology. That means, vermicompost technology is developed in Europe. It is not developed in India. That means, vermicompost technology in the, is not a Indian Swadeshi technology. It is 100% foreign technology, Vidashi technology. But promoter of Swadeshi in India are promoting organic farming, vermicompost technology in the name of Swadeshi. A great theft, great theft. They are stealing the technology from European technology and they are giving their name. It is, it is a very bad. It is not Indian culture. It is not Indian culture. It is not Indian culture. When you prepare vermicompost in the factory and for that purpose, you utilize huge quantities of the straw, huge quantities of dung, and which vermicompost is manufactured. And that vermicompost is utilized again on the soil. Again, again. The urine part of that vermicompost, you decompose, and again, the ammonia is created. Again, ammonia is converted by natosomonas given bacteria into nitrite. Again, nitrobacter is converting nitrite into nitrates. Again, denitrin bacteria convert this nitrate into nitrogen and this free nitrogen is coming in the atmosphere combined with the oxygen in the atmosphere nitrous oxide is created it is emitted in the atmosphere nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas which is responsible for global warming and climate change the carbonic material in the vermicompost Again, decompose, carbon is released when the stable carbon is converted into unstable carbon. In second stage, unstable carbon is converted into volatile carbon by so many biological processes inside the 
vermicompost and at last this carbon is emitted in the atmosphere as it is volatile it combined with the oxygen in the atmosphere carbon dioxide is created it is greenhouse gas remaining 120 in the atmosphere responsible for global warming and climate change. again methane is emitted in the atmosphere and that is greenhouse gas responsible for global warming and climate change that means when you utilize or be composed in the soil you become responsible you become responsible for global warming and climate change again again what i have said humus is created near the root zone not beyond root zone because root speed raw sugar to the microorganisms to inhale their quantity cell division and to give the energy in exchange microorganism cook the food and supply to the roots there is a symbiosis there without getting raw sugar the microorganisms will not create the humus so humus is created near the root zone not beyond the root zone now tell me where this covering manual is prepared not near the root zone beyond the root zone near the cow pen in the pit manual is prepared not humus is prepared compost manual manufactured in the factory not near the root zone manual is manufactured manual not humus is created vermi compost manual in manufacture in the factory not near the root zone that means manual is manufactured not humus is created that means paramparagat kushi go adharit kushi cow based kushi sustainable agriculture shashwat kushi rasan mukt kushi not existed in the nature so also rasan mukt kushi and compost technology organic farming vermi compost technology all these farming technologies are responsible for global warming and climate change global warming and climate change and not carbon is deposited in the soil because humus is not created and soil become barren soil become barren what you are doing what you are doing when you declare the policy about organic farming it is very essential to investigate all the sides of the policy whether it is correct or not because any policy declared by the government or any decision taken by the farmer will have the impact may be good may be bad but 130 crore people are are become become instigated become damaged by this policy so before declaration the policy it is very essential to investigate it is it is a good or bad if the government of india has given the legal commitment in the copenhagen summit that indian government will commit reduce 23% carbon emission and if government of india is willing to commit fulfill that commitment it is very essential to ban the chemical farming which is responsible for global warming coming emitting huge quantity of greenhouse gases we will discuss later on they have to ban parambarat kushi go adharit kushi sustainable agriculture they have to ban the sand mukta kheti they have to ban this organic farming compost technology they have to ban vermi compost technology which are emitting huge quantity of nitrogen greenhouse gases global warming and climate change and i have investigated those farmers in throughout india not even throughout india entire world because continuous i am getting the emails throughout the world 
my english books are read through in throughout the world my videos which are uploaded in youtube are downloaded and listened throughout the world in english in hindi and in all languages south indian languages in entire world in entire world in entire world in india also. there is a critical situation which is a critical situation critical situation sathiyo one thing is most important that any policy will destroy the total wealth of the nation otherwise it will strengthen the wealth of the nation policy is responsible and in entire world nobody want chemical farming nobody want organic farming nobody want sustainable agriculture and farm production so i request to all people related to agriculture please first investigate whether this path is correct or not and then start then start sathiyo when you eat chemically grown food poisons are coming in our intestine when we eat organically grown food in which the honey compound is utilized again cadmium arsenic mercury lead are coming in our intestine and there is a law of the nature that the human is 100% vegetarian human is well well eat the it is a desire and command of the god order of the god that as a vegetarian human being will eat only the loose fruits parts flowers and grains and the tubers of the plant then intestine will accept this food and it will be converted into blood and your health your immunity will be developed very well it will become strong but god has not given the capacity to human intestine to digest human made human made unnatural which is not existing in the nature chemical to enter in the human body if this chemical grown organic grown poisonous material that means cadmium arsenic mercury lead and radioactive elements will enter the human intestine intestine does not accept it at last all this residues of the poisons are deposited in the 60 lakh crore human cells as a toxic garbage and as it is a poison it destroy the immunity weaken the immunity and we suffer by the disease like corona diabetes heart attack cancer it is very sham it is very sham it is very sham so nobody has having the right to take the life of anybody when you practice this vermi compost technology organic farming which is now declared government of india as a policy the government and you will declare the policy organic farming and uh, natural farming continuously both very hazardous the poisonous technology so i request please rethink about the technology and your policy 
सो नो परंपरागत कृषि नो गोवाधारित कृषि नो कंपोस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी नो हर्मी कंपोस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी स्टॉप स्टॉप बोथ आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द ह्यूमस both are responsible for destruction of the fertility and productivity of the soil all these technologies are responsible for global warming climate change emitting huge quantity of the greenhouse gases non government agencies and department of agriculture of state governments and also the government of india they claim that organic farming is a low cost low cost technology then chemical farming we loud they are speaking they are claiming that organic farming is a low cost technology than chemical farming very wrong very wrong very wrong they are misguiding the nation they are misguiding the farmer they are not telling the truth they are telling lie they are liar let us investigate it is correct or not any agriculture scientist promote the farmers that utilize 18 to 20 cartridges per acre cowding manual urea phosphate potash and insecticides in organic farming the promoter of organic farming seller of the organic inputs manufacturer of the organic inputs they promote to the farmers utilize vermi compost utilize organic fertilizer which are sold in the market and you utilize bio pesticide in organic let us compare let us compare fain any chemical farmer who is practicing chemical practicing chemical farming when he purchases one metric ton of the cow dung manure he will invest 2000 rupees 2000 one ton means two cartloads two cartloads 2000 that means in chemical farming 2000 cost of production but in organic farming in organic farming when organic farmer will purchase One ton of the fermi compost, he will invest invest more than five thousand rupees per ton to ten thousand rupees per ton. That means in chemical farming, cost of production two thousand. In organic farming, cost of production is five thousand. How they can claim that organic farming is a low cost technology? We have seen it is a high cost technology. that mean these people are misguiding the nation these people are misguiding the farmers and government when any chemical farmer will purchase one bag of urea what is the cost 300 500 one 30 kg bag of the urea but when any organic farmer will purchase the organic fertilizer 50 kg kg bag from the market there are so many brands so many organic fertilizers are coming to sell and to do the committed to the farmers to purchase it what is the cost 50 kg organic fertilizer here in the cost 1100 to 3000 rupees per bag that means in chemical farm in uh, chemical farming cost of production is Only 500 in organic farming cost of production is double than chemical farming. 1100. When any chemical farmer will purchase endosulfan or any other insecticide, chemical insecticide, he will invest 1000 rupees maximum, 500, 300 maximum because they are getting subsidy. But you go to the market. Organic farming includes bio pesticides are kept for selling. You need to go to the market. You see 
a huge crisis of the biopesticides in organic farming. 50 milli, 100 milli, 200 milli, 500 milli, 1 liter. 1 liter of organic biopesticide is having the cost 3000 to 11000 rupees. That means in chemical farming, insecticide cost is only 500 to 1000. In organic farming, double 1100 to 3000. Very costly this organic farming. That means how much the farmers are exploited by chemical farming, the farmers are exploited more multiple quantities than by this organic farming. Organic farming is a more exploited than chemical farming, more dangerous, more dangerous than corona, more dangerous than the atom bomb. How anybody can promote organic farming? How any farmer can accept this organic farming? Totally impossible. Totally. totally impossible. Satyo, no Pambaya Kushi, no Rasan Mukta Kushi, no Gada Go Adharit Kushi, no Shashur Kushi, not existed, not existed. It is a Karma Kanda. It is a Karma Kanda. It is a balloon of the ignorance. No organic farming. No. No organic farming. No composting or no herbicide. Another technology is that, and that is Vedic farming, yogic farming, and culture farming. We will discuss in thoroughly, thoroughly, but before that, there are two Senapatis, our movement has introduced here, they, are, they came here, Amit, Amit, Dr. Mr. Harshavardhan from Karnataka, uh, from Karnataka and one Sharan Gaura Patil from Karnataka. Sharan Gora Patil is a promoter of organic Subhash Palikar natural farming in Karnataka. He is a best farmer in this technology. He has the best variety, local varieties of the millets. He has the pomegranate orchard also. And Mr. Harshavadana is a was, was a Having the big company, IT company, software engineer, IT bacteria, and he was totally involved in that IT sector. But he thought that I have to come to return back to nature. He read my books, he uh, learned my workshop, and started. Very beautiful model I have seen last year. A fantastic model. So I will call first to Mr. Harshavadana. Please come on and deliver to your, what you have done in Subhash Parvati Natural Farming. Mr. Ashwin. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, namaste, everybody. Namaste. Uh, Awaj, uh, sound. Uh, sh yes. You are the master of this. Sh should I yeah. Should I say how I came into farming, uh, Guruji? Yeah. Should I talk you about how I got into farm? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm a, I was uh, basically a software uh, professional. Software industry from 1995 to 2000. Your voice and, is not uh, clear. Your voice is not clear. Ashwadana. Your voice is not clear. Voice is not clear. Huh. Voice now, now it is clear. Now is now it is clear, Guruji? No, now it is clear. Hello? Oh yeah, yeah. now clear. Yes. So I was in uh, IT industry. Uh, and uh, generally I used to go go to the office from uh, in the morning eight 
and uh, come back uh, in the evening eight or nine. And uh, I didn't have any time for family, uh, no social activity, but there was uh, money in it. That's it. And then, uh, I thought that uh, let me start uh, doing uh, weekend farming. So I had my ancestral land in uh, Chandrapatna, which belonged to my father, and it was uh, passed on to us. So my father was already there, and he was doing chemical farming. He lost a lot of money by doing chemical farming. And uh, I thought that uh, I would start with uh, organic farming. So uh, myself and my brother, we started buying uh, vermicompost. Uh, we bought uh, bio and PK, trichoderm and all those things. And uh, ours is basically a coconut farm. A coconut farm. We had a lot of uh, coconut trees. We had around 600 coconut trees. So we used to dig a uh, one feet uh, trench around the tree. We used to put some ash as per the instruction of the uh, organic uh, uh, company by name Falada. And then we used to put bio NPK and we used to put vermicompost. And we used to cover uh, uh, the field after applying uh, vermicompost, bio NPK and uh, ash uh, the trees improved a little bit uh, but not to the extent to which i was uh, you know less so you know initially uh, it didn't pinch much uh, but uh, later on uh, we st i started losing lakhs of rupees on this uh, vermi compost by npk uh, for my 15 acres plot i started losing a lot of money so somebody suggested that I should uh, look at uh, uh, the time this uh, project natural farming now SPNF and I thought that I'm also doing the same and initially I neglected and when I started losing a lot of money I start, thought that why not attend uh, his seminar. So in 2006 uh, there was a workshop by Guruji in uh, Hassan uh, city, Hassan district, Karnataka, 2006. So, you know, I was a IT professional then. So I thought that I will sit in this class for uh, half an hour and uh, uh, go to my office. So the same workshop started on Monday. So I uh, went to Hassan and uh, in Kala Mandir, I started uh, uh, hearing Guruji talking. And uh, you know, I initially I thought that I will sit for half an hour. Then I was uh, so impressed uh, by his uh, talk that I uh, I thought that I will sit for the whole day. And the whole day I was very inspired. And I sat for the next five days. And at the end of the seminar, you know, I I thought of doing farming as a hobby, but never as a full time profession. At the end of the workshop of Guruji, uh, you know, my heart had changed. So I thought of uh, taking uh, this uh, uh, SPNF as a full-time activity, farming as a full-time activity, inspired by Guruji. So uh, since I was in an IT company, I could not come out of it. I was managing from 50 to 300 employees. We had a lot of partners. We had around 300 employees. So to come out of uh, this IT profession, it took me around uh, uh, two or three years. So I could come out of IT profession only in uh, 2009. Uh, I sold my company and I got into full-time farming. So, you know, 2009, I took another two years for setting up uh, infrastructure like house, uh, you know, cow shed, etc. And actually, Farming, full farming started only in and uh, I had uh, attended Guruji's workshop, uh, three or four workshops. But uh, when I started implementing it uh, practically, I faced a lot of issues uh, because of, uh, natural farming. Uh, it was, you know, 
lack of knowledge on my side because i was coming from a uh, it profession i i was uh, unable to you know even identify whether uh, the plant was healthy or not uh, so i could uh, achieve break even after 3 years uh, after 3 years i could achieve uh, break even using natural farming techniques so uh, when uh, we were doing uh, uh, chemical and organic uh, farming the output from my farm uh, the yield from my cornets was around, uh, probably around 1000 to 10000 nets maximum per annum from about uh, 600 uh, trees after uh, you know implementing uh, uh, natural uh, sorry, spnf techniques uh, my yield went up from uh, 5,000 to 10,000 nuts up to 50 to 60,000 nuts uh, for around Ooh. 600 trees. Mm. Yes. It went up to 60,000 nuts from around uh, 600 trees. Later on, I also added uh, some more uh, area. So now my yield is around uh, 70,000 to 80,000 nuts. Uh, mm. Not only that, uh, uh, you know the size of the nuts was not very good size was very average size uh, after applying SPNF the size of the nuts improved considerably so you know all the nuts most of the nuts are on the 95% of the yeah, uh, nice, very nice, nice. healthy Twice, twice. Hello. That means Hello? Uh, when, when you are practicing organic and chemical, you are not getting the size of the uh, nut. Now in SPNF, Swash Fall Natural Bio, you are getting yes, best yes. size. Yes, okay. Hmm. Best size. Best size. Yes. So, you know, I give an example. So, you know, this is it's quite big. Yeah, beautiful. Hello? Beautiful. beautiful. Hello? Yeah, Hello? Continue, continue. yeah there was continue. internet. Continue, continue. Yeah, continue. yeah this, is the, this is the size of the nets now. So, yeah, you know, it's a huge uh, net. Oh. One of the biggest nets in my farm. Uh, so, you know, uh, there is very less uh, diseases now. Uh, we had some problem known as uh, NUSI, NUSI problem. We Kannada, we call the disease as NUSI. Now that disease is not there after applying a SPNF technique. Yeah. And uh, my average uh, average uh, weight, average weight of the coconut is between 550 grams to 650 grams, which is the best area. My net uh, average size is the average weight is the best, and uh, we also, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we you know uh, we prepare coca, coca, we dry coconut, and uh, you know the farmers are on. Why disturbance? Why disturbance? No. Why disturbance? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. No. So the program, okay, it's calculated for every thousand nuts. Calculated for every thousand nuts, and chemical uh, farmers around my farm, chemical farmers around my farm. Hello. Hello? Yeah, Are you yeah. able to hear me, Guruji? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chemical I'm farmers sure. around my farm. Yeah, chemical farmers around my farm, they get around between 100 kgs to 150 kgs maximum. Uh, mm. Whereas in my farm, the, you know, the uh, yield for every thousand nuts, the copra yield mm. for every thousand nuts is around mm. 160 kgs to 195 kgs. So which is Beautiful. the best around, which is the best around which is the best around. Beautiful. And uh, uh, we 
we use both uh, liquid jeevanamritam and kara jeevanamritam in our form so liquid uh, jeevanamritam is applied uh, regularly so it is applied uh, in an interval of uh, one application in one month or one and a half month liquid jeevanamritam but initially we are uh, we were giving more we used to apply twice or thrice a month but now we are applying once in a month or uh, once in one and a half months and uh, ganajamrutam we apply specifically for you know trees which are very weak so plants for, for saplings so we apply ganajamrutam we apply ganajamrutam and i have seen that you know for coconut trees which are weak or for the tender whatever plant it might be we apply ganajamrutam fast uh their health improves uh, very fast uh for liquid jeevanamritam we use the dung of our own cows but uh, while preparing gana jeevanamritam you know we find that there is a dung shortage so for that we get dung from outside we cannot get uh, this local cow dung from outside we have to get buffalo dung uh, you know bu- 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 buffalo dung is the only option available uh, because uh, you know around uh, the, the villages around our farm Uh, more or less most of them are all uh, hybrid cows uh, so uh, we are very g- g- getting g- good results for, by, by using this combination of both liquid and uh, solid uh, geomethan uh, what is the intercrop area now is around intercrops in the main yeah. coconut what are the intercrops yeah yeah so we have applied uh, the coconut uh, model which is found in guruji's book so with uh, coconut we are growing arecanet we are grown arecanet our arecanet uh, trees are around 7 to 8 years old and uh, okay. we are growing pepper uh, and uh, we are growing uh, turmeric uh, we are growing uh, coffee uh, banana was there but after uh, you know the uh, this arecanet uh, trees it uh, went beyond the banana the yield uh, of the banana plants have come down but for the first 6 or 7 years the banana plants were giving yield after the arecanet uh, uh, trees uh, have gone uh, grown beyond this uh, banana plants so the yield has come down uh, uh, last year we you know we uh, we generally get on to 80 to even for 20 acres so we have got around 8 trees and uh, we get uh, last year we got around the 40 quintals of arecanet so it was our first uh, uh, you know yield arecanet yield uh, which is the variety of arecanet variety of arecanet variety is tirthali tirthali variety tirthali 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 Okay, so Best actually the saplings uh, we bought it from place near Tirthali. It's not actually near Tirthali, but that variety is Tirthali variety. Tirthali variety. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, pepper is uh, Paniur, Paniur one. Uh, we I could not get this local varieties at that time, so we have planted no. Paniur uh, one. Okay. Uh, so 150 kg uh, yield we got uh, last year. Paniur one and Paniur two. Uh, and, uh, Paniur one. Paniur one. Paniur one. Okay, Paniur one. Yeah. And uh, but, uh, we also have turmeric. So last year uh, we harvested around four uh, hundred uh, to four fifty kgs. No, it's turmeric powder. I'm talking about powder. So we get the turmeric powder and we sell it. in uh, bangalore and uh, mysore we sell it for around 300 rupees per kg uh, oh. uh, coffee we, uh, our coffee the plants are not maintained in a good manner because of uh, labor issues uh, really? labor issues there are labor issues so because of those issues uh, we are uh, not, not able to maintain coffee plants properly but still we get coffee for to sell uh, to a certain extent to the customers to the customers uh, so you know my uh, uh, you know my income my expenses around 6 to 7 lakhs on the farm uh, 
and uh, my income varies from the price of the coconuts because that is my main crop. So it varies between around uh, uh, lakhs to uh, 19 lakhs uh, income. Uh, my expense is around, mainly the in, uh, expense I am incurring is from the labor. For labor, I am spending the maximum amount of money. Maximum amount of money is spent on uh, so in the SPF technique, I have never made a loss. I have to the rental point. Tell the per acre income. Per acre income. In one acre, what is the income? Hello. 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 Huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. We are getting around eighty thousand lakh. Uh, our Arikana lands are still young. No, total, total. Arikana, coconut, black pepper, and banana, uh, and yeah. so um, Arikana. You uh, all yeah yeah all together, one acre. all together all together it's around one acre one acre of land it's between eighty thousand to one lakh rupees eighteen thousand to eighty thousand to eighty thousand to one lakh okay rupees to one lakh rupees one lakh all put together the net plants are still young. They are seventy years. They have not achieved the full, you know. Hello, disconnected. Ashodana. Hello. Yes. Ah. Sir, the internet uh, connection went off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you, are, uh, okay. you give your address phone number. Yes, sir. Your address phone yeah. number. Uh, my, my number is 98450 73953. 98450. Seven three nine five three. Beautiful. Uh, phone number. Yeah. Uh, my address is C G Harshavardhan. Uh, C G Harshavardhan. Vijay Lakshmi Gurve Farm. Uh, Andur Post. A dot Cholena Haldi. A dot Cholena Haldi. Kasaba Hobli. Kasaba Hobli. So, Chanaraya Patna Taluk, Chanaraya Patna Taluk, Hassan District, Hassan District, Hassan. 573 Yes, Hassan District, 573 Beautiful. As a software engineer, you are saying total. Now, you are, you are in contact yes, of yes. other uh, uh, software engineers? Sir. Another soft engineers are coming to you? Yes, sir. Yes. You visit your models? Uh, a lot of, yes, yes, yes. A lot of yeah. uh, software professionals and uh, okay. even uh, other professionals like lawyers. Uh, and uh, they are uh, much inspired and a uh, lot of them are uh, taking up uh, uh, yes, in a lot of them are taking uh, this uh, farming. Before, uh, you know, even people from outside, uh, from Europe, uh, North America, all of yeah. them have come. They come through basically one company known as Falada. They have given certification for us. So they come and uh, they are very impressed. And uh, uh, before, I think they used to come from far off places, far off places uh, for. Uh, uh, you know, watching this is enough. But nowadays, I am seeing a lot of farmers from 
near to my okay. farm and they are most of them are educated farmers educated they are uh, all they have uh, completed their graduation and they are very much interested in okay ashudha uh very thankful to you uh, you have uh, Thank uh, given valuable information to the farmers and uh, the farmers are listening yes, this interview throughout the world due to the it is live on the youtube i uh, very thankful to you and uh, uh, i will you one invention that in his farm drumstick drumstick plant he has raised the black people on the drumstick and very beautiful the black people are raised on the avec canet also and coconut also as they he has uh, raised the uh, on the drumstick that means you can take the arik kanat on uh, black people on the drumstick also and uh, it is the center a beautiful center in south india in asan district and lot of people are coming to uh, visit the, his model and he is totally satisfied he said that when uh, he was engineer but now as a farmer he is too much satisfied than he was engineer Very thankful to Harshodan. Thank you very much. Now we will invite Mr. Sudan Gora Patil uh, from Raichur district of Karnataka, and uh, he is a basically uh, belonging to uh, a beautiful, I think that uh, uh, farmer's family, and he had developed. the pomegranate orchard in subhashpur natural farming and most important that he has the millets variety very fantastic barnard millet and other millets so sharan goda please continue you are welcome yeah sir 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 yeah sir myself sharan goda part tel why she is not coming something is wrong with the hello mai sab sarna goda patel ha ya ya continue continue from from raicho district from raicho district hello yeah yeah myself sarana goda patil from raicho district yeah myself sarana goda patil from raicho district karnataka yeah, state you, sir thank you thank you i am i am grateful to my god pooja sri palakar guru ji voice voice you can hear the hear the voice sir Yeah, okay 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 Hello. my i have used the thank name you. yeah yeah uh, continue ah uh, i have used on the word that uh, my god puja palakar telling in the seminars and youtube thus uh, the same thing the same thing uh, the same thing happens in my field and in nature also as in our dharma and our culture what the person tells that the, uh, that happens in the nature and our field will be believe uh, for me he is an a god sir koti koti namaste from may to 10 years now i am growing the millets in last year we have grown the three types of the millets for for in fox tail millet brown head millet and uh, brown top millets in fo in uh, fox tail millet we have taken the intercrop as halsandi also the in fo okay. fox tail okay. millet we will get the seven in uh, fox tail millet we have taken for acre seven quintals also in uh, brown head millet and the uh, brown head millet you will get the six quintals and the uh, brown top millets we have gotten six quintal also in uh, brown head and in brown top millets we have taken the red gram also in, in as an intercrop also so thus as for the structure and the 
uh, uh, smell of the soil in our field was uh, fantastic. And the soil has become like a sponge type soil. And the millets are very, very healthy and very beautiful. That green, you also, to, you, we are very uh, used to see that, that the color of the green of that millets also. In our uh, cow and in our bullock, the straw material of that uh, uh, millets uh, and the straw material of the uh, chemical uh, grown rice paddy uh, straw materials, if we have taken to that uh, cow and uh, bullock in front of that uh, straw material, they have to heat only that millet straw material. They will reject that uh, uh, rice, uh, that uh, chemically grown rice straw material. No. That sense of human that we can we can see in our cow and on our bullock also. Even in our village, that uh, in our village that uh, uh, for cow and for bullock, they will get that uh, mouth uh, uh, disease and the uh, leg disease. For in our uh, for especially in our uh, cows and uh, bullocks, they, they, there is no mouth disease and there is no leg disease also. Very healthy in that uh, um, uh, cows and uh, Buffalo, so you can see in our uh, home. In uh, last uh, year, uh, uh, I have taken the five-layer model of in uh, SPNF method only. In that uh, five-layer model, we have we taken the main crop as in jam and that near lay. And uh, second, lemon and uh, crusted apple and papaya and drumsticks. Up. In uh, March 2019, we have, we have not have the rainfall uh, when bor the borewells are also dried up there is no rainfall in complete in the summer season we have not even have one single drop also we have to take the water from home only to, to the uh, uh, farm in that condition the for trees and the plants were very 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 greeny and very healthy also yeah. the papaya the papaya we are sending to Oh, Bangalore city and Raichur city also. And one lady of in Bangalore city, in Bangalore city, she ha, she had taken our papaya, and uh, the on that stall we are they have to display the uh, my number and my address and my name also. In that lady, they had taken the papaya to home and they, she kept for uh, eight days to ten days. She she forgotten. Uh, she kept uh, the let's send. After eight days, she, she saw that papaya and uh, uh, that papaya was fully ripened and she cut that papaya and that uh, liquid of that papaya came out. And she taken in the cup and she drank that uh, papaya's liquid. That uh, papaya liquid has become that uh, honey, honey's uh, taste. And he has yeah. taken my number, he called me and she was crying. What a beautiful taste. What a uh, fantastic state. Uh, God. Uh, your, your papaya. Uh, when the papaya in market of your papaya, I'll continuously I'll take your papaya till what is your papaya's wonderful papaya taste that given to you, sir. You are a fantastic person for us. If the Parakar Guruji is not with us, we will not be in the farming also. At we, all the methods of that farming is only input, only business. But the SPNF method was an ultimate method and ultimate structure of the soil and the beauty of that nature. And uh, we asked to taken in that uh, five-layer method drumstick also. Wonderful drumstick. In last uh, uh, corona lockdown or something, all that happens in, in our field. But we are, we are send at, 1 to 2, 1.5 lakhs to 2 lakhs uh, dumpstick we have sold in very local area only. That taste of the dumpstick and size of the dumpstick was wonderful, sir. In that intercrop of five layer, we have taken 250 bags of onions and 20 quintals of alsanja and chili and brinjal also. Two to three years of results we can see in our farm. If the program has given to in daytime, I have to, to show everything of my field in our field also, if the time is in our later stage. Uh, for, for giving for fantastic technology, sir, we are very, very grateful and we are very thankful to us, sir. Hello? Yeah, yeah.
uh, uh. sir na I, yeah, first in I, we are growing jawar also in our in, in our jawar field or uh, in late in, in nowadays if for in for jawar also they are getting an insects attack so five to six sprayers are spray chemical spraying are given giving all the farmers are giving in for jawar also nowadays in our jawar field jawar and uh, bengal gram mixed intercrop we are taken wonderful jawar and very very big uh, athenia and uh, uh, will uh, white and very beautiful jawar and also the intercrop also the straw material of that jawar also very good in uh, chemical farming jawar inside that uh, straw material that red mark will be there and the inserts will be there only uh, uh, the the in for cows or buffaloes they cannot heat also that uh, straw material that uh, that uh, almost uh, 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 that soil has been uh, completely destroyed if the once the soil has to be re re regain the strength means only the method is the spnf method only hello hello uh, yeah, yeah. continue hello, hello, hello. Uh, only the spnf method only uh, hello yeah yeah continue uh, we are in dryland crop also in dryland crop we are getting up to 30000 rupees per acre we, no investment nothing in rain field crop also in in, uh, in irrigated crops we are getting 1.5 lakhs 1 lakhs above only we are getting the income very very we are enjoying that farming was on a very one way, very uh, enjoying that farming to do the natural farming hello yeah hello 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 that is our uh, uh, in our field and we are doing that very uh, hvnf method sir pomegranate daimbe ah pomegranate last year we have uh, 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 last year we have taken that pomegranate also sir in, in uh, pomegranate intercrop with uh, drum streak that pomegranate also we are sending to the bangalore and rachel also that pomegranate the taste of the pomegranate was wonderful the in uh, in uh, taste and quality of the pomegranate also very great, very rich that pomegranate the seed is very smooth if the pomegranate taken by the chemical farming if the pomegranate taken by our natural farmer in parker method the seed of that pomegranate if the chemical farming is to very hard they have to cut if they if you were taken in the mouth that the sound will become cut cut but in natural farming pomegranate that smoothness if the pomegranate taken in the mouth it will be as the pomegranate we cannot observe also that pomegranate we are taking that it's all what you know another one beauty then pomegranate we are sown with one tree of the pomegranate the pomegranate fruit of the taste of one fruit is different from taste of another fruit this is wonderful uh, nature sir taste of one pomegranate is one taste and the taste of another pomegranate fruit is another uh, taste so that what taste is a uh, wonderful taste in pomegranate also uh, we are getting an, a very good uh, millets and very good uh, drum streaks and very good papaya and very good pomegranate and a very good jawar and very uh, good bengal gram also alsanda chilli very wonderful uh, uh, lv uh, atmosphere you can see in our farm hello uh, yeah hello uh, yeah yeah Could the you... structure of the soil uh, uh, the structure of the soil in our uh, field uh, uh, that is an uh, becoming dark uh, color of that soil also the you must you, you can see the smell of that uh, uh, soil also many people are visiting to our farms and they are uh, they are coming and they are, they are they are sitting up to uh, evening yeah they are, they will be will be here only uh, and they are telling and they will think and they will sit and they will enjoy and they will going they are going sir hello uh, 
Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Ah. Ah, the, now, now we have the millets with uh, yellow sesame intercrop and uh, uh, red gram and uh, now we are getting uh, 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 red gram and now in we are in five layer now the now that the five layer in right yeah to district it is in a hot area this area we can get in the temperature of 43 44 40 25 degree also in in this area now you the five layer method that you uh, type in a uh, special in uh, papaya the two years papaya for in chemical farming they have to take in 15 months they have to uh, go on that papaya tree in uh, in our farm the two years papaya very big papaya tree and side branches also they are growing side branches they are growing and they are taking the flowers and they are yeah, in fruits also they are coming in side branch also. So what I think that papaya will be and at least variety which seven eight six red red leaves. Which is the variety of papaya? Seven eight six red. Seven eight six red lady. Hmm. Ah, in such seven eight six red lady also the, there is no disease nothing the beautiful papaya is coming the taste of papaya was wonderful. We cannot see the taste of papaya for that. Taste we cannot see any, anywhere. How much maximum uh, income you are getting than uh, chemical farmer? Uh, the, in, in, in our uh, papaya, the papaya is there, drumstick is there, and uh, crushed apple is there, lemon is there, and uh, jam, the nearly is there, even mango tree is there, and uh, sweet tamarind is there. All the five intercrops in, in below that we, we are getting the honey and chili and uh, all the uh, strange method is there one single drop of the water is not going outside my in our field in the, below that uh, my farm uh, some farmers farmer is there in that farm that open well is getting a uh, uh, water in that farm also one uh, single soil erosion is not uh, done in our uh, farm. All this are uh, happening in uh, SPNF method only. No soil erosion, no water air, water percolation is not there. Complete water is uh, under uh, uh, is deposited in the soil only. If in five layer in 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 my five layer yearly one big grain is happened means enough all the uh, fruits will get easily yeah no. even and in a hot area Guruji? yeah hmm. okay even in hot uh, how much you are getting more than chemical farm income Income uh, in chemical farming last year, the papaya rate is 3 rupees. Complete mm. washed out. They are loosed for a year, 2 to 3 lakhs rupees. Mm. In, uh, in my papaya, 20 to 24 rupees, last 30 rupees they attack in, in Bangalore only. In, uh, mm. in Bangalore city, Anmatraj is taking. Uh, that uh, papaya, in uh, papaya, especially in papaya, they have lost in our area. They have removed mm. the papaya. Uh, in uh, in our papaya, if uh, minimum one lakh is getting for us per acre. And uh, uh, you have taken the drumstick. Which is the variety of drumstick? Nugget. I have taken the drumstick. Three types of varieties: PKM one, ODC, and Bagya. Three okay. separate varieties are there in our field. Uh. Which is which is the best now? Which is the best? Uh, uh, PKM one is an. Uh, best and uh, uh, three three also we, we are getting very good but pkm is the length is very big uh, uh, the length of the drumstick is more bigger bigger one how many five, five layer model how many acre five acres sir in five the acre. middle of that uh, five acres okay
you do so i, I am you very I'm... much interested to ah uh, you give your address phone number give it to ah myself sharanagoda patil village basapur b a s a p u r basapur taluk maski m a s k i maski district raichur raichur state karnataka number 7019872375 ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರ್ Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, we have uh, Nishan, Sharan Gowda and Harshavadana. And uh, he said that he has got eight times more production and income than chemical farmers. And he mentioned that he is very happy. And uh, water uh, requirement is very less. Very less. No single drop was flowing upon the soil. Every drop of the Uh, rain water was deposited in the soil soil become very soft and uh, in five layer model he has fantastic taken the all intercrops and it will be a best model i think that in the future so thank you harshvardhana thank you uh, sharan gowda patil and thank you all of you again we will uh, continue in next sunday 5:30 uh, evening thank you very much